I don't know if many people know uh, what I am or what I, what, what I do, um, but there were so many uh, people already talking here today about uh, lighting and how to do lighting, lighting design and examples and stuff like that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the design, the business of it. So it's going to be a little bit more different than the things that you saw before. Um, and I'm going to, well, this is actually what ACTLD is. And you see the art concept technology. I kind of make my presentation in three parts. I'm going to talk about what we call our art or our body of work. I'm going to talk about how we conceptualize what in the technology is what the tools that we actually use in our office to get there. Um, because I started this in this business about 30 years ago. Uh, and my evolution through being a lighting designer for just for entertainment, going to architecture, and now leading this experiential design studio is a little bit the element that I'm going to get you through. Um, our art is, like I said, it's the body of work that we are showing uh, to the public. And uh, as a good and brief introduction, there is a movie here. It's a two minute introduction of ACTLD and what we do. And it's a very selling uh, video. So this is typically what I show to a CEO that has a, a two minute attention span and nothing more because after that he's already on his cell phone looking at the emails that he has been missing for the kind of thing. So um, it's a harsh one, but just have a look and we'll see what it does for you. Hi, we are ACTLD. We are a multidisciplinary creative studio specializing in designing and building visionary experiences, artworks, and installations. We are considered in the top five of lighting design studios in the world. We work with the top event agencies, producers, architects, and developers worldwide. ACTLD was born in Brussels over 25 years ago in 1995. We provide full service lighting and visual environment design. Our diverse international and multi-skilled teams share backgrounds in a multitude of skills ranging from architecture to art, lighting and scenography, plus all the technical skills needed for our daily scope of services. Our team has the right balance between senior and junior positions and in the most diverse disciplines. We are invited to work on projects all around the globe, from our home country all the way to Saudi Arabia, China, Mexico and Southeast Asia by way of Europe and the US. Since the very start of its journey, ACTLD has received numerous prestigious awards for its innovative and forward-thinking approach of lighting and experience design. Over 25 years in this business, ACTLD has transitioned from lighting design for events and outdoor spectacles towards architectural lighting design, then going over content design and our first art installations through projects where we took responsibility over the full visual design. This transition is now in full process, where we use our skills from entertainment and architectural projects towards experience design and production. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for watching. So usually it does the trick, at least we get a foot in the door and we can introduce ourselves further and maybe be invited into a pitch uh, and that brings us to the conceptual phase. But um, our scope of work and uh, what we really are developing internally um, 
the still entertainment is still you know one of our main backbones that we have um, the experience design is really what we are developing now for the next five years uh, and the art installations is also a very nice market into which we are uh, developing ourselves and de depending on where we are in the world you know we show a plethora of, of projects this one is typically for uh, the Middle East and Southeast Asia um, but this is not one person. Uh, we are 15, between 15 and 20 people, depending on the time of day in the office. But it's still a process and a company uh, into which um, I feel that what today also plays and we, the, the things that we take for granted, being an artist and living in a free country, uh, having access, uh, you know, inclusion and diversity and everything that for us is normal, we are putting that also into our company as a set of rules and that's why uh, ethical practice, professional conduct and what we also take for granted, being able to be scarce with the resources uh, that we have on our planet is embedded. Yeah. So we really adhere to this kind of set of rules onto which we are um, also controlled uh, by outside um, control mechanisms uh, about, uh, you know, I can safely say that for the last f you know, 10, 12 years, we really were always 50-50 people, uh, female and male uh, in our company. Actually today we are almost 65% female uh, in our company and it's, that's nothing and also multinational from, uh, we have people from Chile and Mexico uh, to, the Mid uh, to the Middle East and Chinese. So that diversity is also something that really helps us to develop that properly. Um, the professional conduct, uh, and then I'm talking about, you know, the the, arc, you know, the 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 way the architects are organizing themselves, and the way they also have to adhere, or the Association of International Lighting Designers, uh, which is mostly for architectural uh, lighting designers. But those professional bodies give you also the tools to be able to, you know, to. To, to conduct properly and it makes yourself in front of a, a business, uh, you know, a CEO of a big um, uh, shopping center uh, promoter, it gives you that, that just that kind of thing where you, you, you can bring yourself into the door. And let's not forget the resources. Uh, uh, it, this is not something that in entertainment is really well uh, versed, but uh, being lead to Briam um, uh, certified, uh, it's not us as a company that is certified, it's always the project of the buildings that we are certifying in that kind of way. But that's a, th that kind of element is really part of our, of our of ACT and I, I cannot really say it that much that I, I wish everybody would actually uh, bring that up and if there's an association around uh, lighting designers or the designers in this business, it would really be beneficial to bring that up. Conceptualizing is the first step that we do and we just had a, a small interview with somebody who the first question is how do you measure time and quality when you are conceptualizing um, and that is actually exactly what I'm going to show you here uh, because for me the time equals quality, no time doesn't equal quality. Uh, there is a really big difference in this day and age of trying to come up with proper ideas and not just a hatch and batch of everything that you found uh, lately on your Instagram feed and put it together into a show. But I'm showing you here now a, a, a movie of a concept that we did with three graphics people and uh, one lead designer, one senior designer in about uh, seven days and a half. And um, I, I already say to you, I was not happy with the result, but the client was, but we still didn't get it. So I'm showing you that little because movie here. We care. A stunning new architectural design. Sandvik's yeah. new home in Jubail deserves an amazing moment of inauguration, a true experience to remember. A unique shaped building where along the outside almost no 90 degree corners can be discovered, completely wrapped in a modern design of the Mashrabiya. Inside we find inspiring... 
What I'm doing now, I'm stopping it here because it's too long, and I'm going to play the same thing in three times the, the amount of time that we have. For so many things in your everyday life. So, and even more for the questions. A little bit more difficult to understand, but at least you can be able to see what we're actually proposing in this uh, video. A stunning new architectural design, Savik's new home in Jubeu, deserves an amazing moment of inauguration, a true experience to remember. A unique shaped building, where along the outside, almost no 90-degree corners can be discovered, completely wrapped in modern design of the Masrania. Inside, we find inspiring spaces that take care of the professional well-being of all its users and visitors, the newest Savik biosphere to discover. On November the 23rd, 2022, in Jubeu, Saudi Arabia, Savik proudly presents the official unveiling of the new headquarters building by Our Highnesses Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, King of Saudi Arabia, and Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud, Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, in the presence of 100 VIP guests, 1,000 Savik employees, and potentially 10,000 people from the local community. Evening full of discoveries awaits them, ranging from the majestic architecture of the building itself in the first place to numerous pleasant event biotopes to discover, perfect for socializing and networking. To this, we have a unique series of thematic light artworks and decorational setups designed and produced by internationally renowned flower specialist Daniel Mast to make the experience on this festive day even more unique. A step by step tour of the new building with Savic HQ being the star of the evening, surrounded by strong event co stars in all zones of the event. Starting with the Savic exhibit, a clear expression of thanks and appreciation to the entire project team for creating this unique architectural gem in the no perpendicularity inspired video map exhibit wall with local audio soundscapes. An oasis of peace and beauty in both courtyard gardens. In the first garden, we find a fossil, a pixel controlled LED sculpture with a mesmerizing visual experience. A permanent light sculpture inspired by the Sunday Vision 2030 provides a very clear signal and magical atmosphere that will be both in soft gardens. Each of the invitees can influence the artwork itself into new visual creations. All light sculptures and light designs are creations of the team of ECT Lighting Design and artist principal designer Gurt Vermeulen. They were also responsible for the starry mission at the Nur Riyadh Light and Art Festival and numerous other world famous light installations. Your VDIP guests walk through the employee reception area to the majestic experiences. In this space, they discover a third light art object with again a unique creative angle. The artwork is stationary but moves via its integrated light to the viewer who admires it and interacts with it. For your prominent excellences, the experience continues for a while as the Savic employees enjoy the reception, and outside the residents from the community slowly gather to experience the normal moment. The way to the Majidis leads along a staircase in the office spaces, which we have transformed into a light work of art again for the occasion. A colorful light installation is installed to make the Excellencies walk more exciting. A moment of rest and meeting for the Excellencies. The comfortably furnished Majidis welcomes them, whereby an entire wall of this salon consists of a large LED video screen on which the atmosphere outside and in the inner gardens and employee reception can be followed alive. In all tranquility, comfort, and safety, your Excellencies will experience the event from the first row. But the experience does not end here for your Excellencies. The 360 degree immersive Majidis experience room with Ambient Elo LED ceiling will take them through the whole adventure. Savic and the construction of the building as if they were there, ending with a fast elevator ride up to the roof of the Savic Tower overlooking the Jebel of 2030. The official show moment is realized with the greatest care and respect for you and your guests. Why? Because, like Savic, we care about them too, and that will be the main best thing for the inauguration. Because we care, in addition to your existing baseline chemistry that matters. We care about so many things in our and your daily lives, and want to improve the world we live in with the products and innovations we as Savic can offer worldwide. The only limit consists of our choices. Together, we can do a lot, and together, we will continue to work on that world of tomorrow. The outdoor show is fully captured by live cameras to display inside the auditorium on a wide canvas, multiple viewpoints with audience reactions, overview of the building and video projection mapping, and the artistic acts. These images are initially upgraded with augmented reality effects over the live sources of the various cameras to create a unique inside show. In addition, two holographic projection screens positioned perpendicularly to the screen in the stands ensure that the guests are really in the middle of the experience, as if they were standing outside, close up of the acts, but also the effects of augmented reality or even audience shots appear on these holographic screens. The indoor show is initially finished off by live acts inside, matching the visual show story from outside. The acts are placed again in a stylish light installation with matrix of beams left and right of the stage, so that the whole with the projections and the LED screen with augmented reality brings a total integrated experience. After the opening video and brief obligatory speeches, we will then move to the official inaugural moment. We ask our excellencies on stage to jointly finish off the scale model of the Savic building, symbolically by placing it on a pedestal together. At this moment, the scale model lights up, and a laser show in the auditorium starts the show inside and outside. The outdoor show is set up in opening, three scenes, and a strong finale. It will be captured and upgraded for the indoor auditorium experience. Optionally, a live concert can enhance the festivities after the finale. Each of the scenes has its own specific message that we finalize with you. have seen what we've done it's a patchwork it's a patchwork of things that we've done before patchwork of things that you by 
you know, by just pushing it all together into elements that would reply to the to the client brief, which is then not not ideal at all. Uh, it could maybe look impressive, and it certainly sells in a certain way. Uh, but I feel that if you uh, we, we are struggling every day choosing. Uh, those kind of lucrative uh, projects, uh, 23, 24 million dollars in, in for something like that, but having to uh, give away a lot of your creativity and artistic integrity uh, to be able to uh, respond to that speed that today's business is much more about. And in the very nice speech of um, uh, Matthew and Filippo, where they are, you know, that uh, their uh, spiral, uh, I'm pretty sure that they, they come to the point where they ask for time. Um, so having the luxury to have time is the biggest artistic impression. It's really about the tools that we're using inside a company. And the, the first thing is really the methodology. Um, our methodology, uh, like uh, Filippo and Matthew also showed, you had like 15 phases in your elements. We, we, we try to stay with uh, six <laughs> um, because as a designer we are brought in at sometimes a later stage or when we are part of really the, the, the core artistic team we are also in there. But this is actually used what architects and other people are also using and that kind of process process really also helps uh, everybody on board uh, because if you work two years on a project you can really also take uh, you know somebody else that bring that that comes in after a year or somebody leaves the office the way we are implementing it uh, documenting uh, and keeping all that uh, all that IP that we're making alive is a methodology that we use and we need the um, the expertises, you know, uh, is another set of the tools that we are having on board or we bring it in from outside. But we have that high level creative uh, elements where creative direction, lighting design, because lighting is always a bit of a part of our project that we have, scenography, scenography and content creation. The secondary elements, like everything that has to do with special effects, and of course, uh, audio systems design, but interaction design is, is also today uh, a very important part because uh, a lot of the things that we do are solely technology-based um, experiences or uh, we are not, we're not putting a human character uh, in there, not a lot. Then I'm not producing it and somebody else is actually doing it. But that also means that if you have a show uh, every hour on the hour of five minutes, there's 55 minutes of uh, other moments that you can actually have your installation you know, interact, play, engage with your audience. So interaction design is also today for us a core competency that we want to bring inside. And then of course all the technical uh, design uh, tools that you actually need, whether it's technical direction and pre-visualization and all those elements. Now, my next slide was actually a, um, uh, a theater design for Shimalong, um, but I'm going a little bit quickly over this because I thought what Matthew <laughs> and Flippo already showed, for some of have seen them, uh, they explained much better what we are actually doing here. Um, the feasibility study that started with this, and especially on this theater, uh, is me um, they wanted to have a 360 degree theater and when I came in, just as, as lighting and projection uh, of special effects designer, uh, I kind of convinced them not to do that. And I, I asked them, uh, having been uh, the original lighting designer for the Rev, uh, and if Pavel is here, in, still in the audience, if he needs some anecdotes about what uh, what it is to work on, on the, the, the Rev show and the happy coincidences that uh, Matthew was talking about, he can come to me afterwards. But having seen what, how difficult it is to do a 360 degree show, I, the first thing I did was just to create this massive uh, LED wall that makes it a, a theater and no longer a circ, uh, you know, roundabout where I'm looking into. 
Um, that kind of brought us to a whole other set, and I'm just going over this. This is our concept design and schematic design kind of documents that you are creating uh, and the deliverables that come with this from visualizations to kind of uh, all kinds of uh, elements. The, uh, during design development, uh, everything that comes into place, as all, everything has to do with details uh, at that point. Until you come into the theater itself and you, you, know, you get your tool uh, into which uh, we were, unfortunately, on this project, uh, taken over by a Chinese company at that moment uh, who took the rest of the programming for us. So I, I'm not uh, responsible for the end result on, on this project. The, um, but it, it is a, 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 you know, a good example of our methodology and all the tools and uh, talents that we bring in onto a project itself. Which brings me then to uh, our innovation lab, because we've always been a company that has, you know, tried to be at the forefront of innovation. Uh, but innovation is not something that happens, you know, on a whim. You know, you can have this crazy idea on a project, and then you you want to create something. But um, a lot of times, that if you don't have time, you know, it, it, it gets skipped out. So we took the initiative in 2019 to really build ourselves an innovation lab into which we continuously try to make uh, innovation happen. And we do that uh, on three focus areas, storytelling, design process, and systems. Because those are the ones that for us are the, the ones that we, we can use them most of the time really into our, into our, our body of work that we want to produce. And when we have that ready, um, even if it's just from a conceptual or a proof of concept or just before development stage, it's, it's, a, it's a really added advantage from our side to be able to, to, to forward this. Um, and so, for instance, this is one of our projects into which we are now at the proof of concept, where it's a 24-7 it's a delivery system of uh, content. You know, content is very expensive uh, if you have to make it. So this is a way of trying to make 24-7 a content. I'm not going into much uh, detail actually here, but uh, that is the things that we are actually doing in our innovation lab to, to push everything forward. Another one is the happiness factor. Uh, most of the shows and things that we do are, um, we, we, we cannot measure actually what, objectively, what the people are saying. You, know, you put some people at the end with a, you know, with, with an enquete former, and you know, are you happy with the show? Yeah, I'm happy with the show. You know, a lot of uh, theme parks, they have that kind of thing. So um, we have this idea about capturing uh, 10, 15 people uh, in the audience every day, every show, and making that data available for us to, to measure uh, is our show too long? Yeah. Let's, uh, and if, of course, for our shows that are only technology driven, I can make a show that's 11 minutes, and I can make another version that's 12 minutes, and I can make another version which is 30 minutes, and I can show every day another show until I have data enough to actually see which one is actually the show that the people like the most, objectively. You know, it's a combination of uh, facial uh, proxemics, so body language, and also the you know uh, everything that has do with sensors on your on your pulse or on your heart. So it's the combination of three because each of those techniques that you use has advantages and disadvantages, but bringing them all together is a tool that we are making. Uh, this one was now selected for Innovartis, uh, you know, um, a subsidy that we get from the European government or Belgian government to actually develop it in, into a, a real product. And the um, last one that I want to show you here is uh, the drones that we developed for Pretty Fu uh, in 2013 um, was a very nice innovation project that came from our will to, to do something special and, and to, you know, to push things forward. Um, but we kind of stopped developing airborne uh, drones and we are now more looking at how to do it for land and sea, you know. Uh, because we think nobody's touching on those things. And so 
this is a little movie that shows the concept behind one of those, what you call an, a land drone, uh, which is basically um, a moving, moving head in this configuration here. All the parts that we are using are actually uh, elements that already exist uh, on the market. Um, Amazon has been very successful in putting automation into the warehouses into which we are actually taking that technology and trying to bring that into our entertainment industry. Um, there has been lots of people that has been working on stages, you know, for movement and stuff like that. Um, the goal for this one is that this mo little moving, moving element is is going to cost no more than a like a tarantula, uh, you know, a, a medium moving head uh, element to it, which is feasible because most of the other. Uh, platforms that I see from ACT, a Swedish company, well, they cost $150,000, $250,000, you know, to have them. So uh, this is an, an exercise in visualization where we, the size of a stadium, and within the size of the stadium, we said how many moving, moving lights do we need to make it feel like it is a filled up space into which we can actually promote and do a narrative uh, in this kind of thing. The, the idea came to me of, of this element while I was doing um, um, a stadium show in, in, in Riyadh um, and I absolutely wanted to have low side light positions but all the big movement um, productions during that show they needed all the space that there was and so my my idea was why can't I have a little platform so I can put my side light where I want to and then when the big movement comes in I'll just you know they push them aside now in the end we did it with stage hands um, but having that as a choreography actually would make much more sense take a little bit of liberty with the speed of those uh, little platforms because we had to make it uh, worthwhile for the uh, uh, for the music so uh, don't catch my breath on that and I know that sometimes it's a little bit too quick to go um, visualizations are the you know is the the last tool that I want to show you here because um, we you know we know that visualizations and and making everything look for our clients is is the way to push yourself forward for uh, against your competitor and so we made a lot of strive into that that part so this last movie that I'm showing here is the one about our visualization techniques and how we can, uh, what we can actually already visualize. And lots of people can do really nice lighting. Uh, lighting has been, you know, via WYSIWYG and, uh, and capture and everything on the forefront. What our goal is to make uh, a tool set in which we can have each and every um, element that we need uh, Sorry, I'm going to take a little bit. Uh, that we actually need uh, in our show 
to actually visualize it so that we can uh, the, the most expensive time is the time that you actually spend in the theater or on site, especially if in your exterior sites, with all the techniques and all the elements that are there. The more we can do before, uh, the more we can actually be artistically and creatively free during our real programming time that we are there. And we still have time to discover the theater. You actually have more time to spend on, on discovering the theater because during our process that we have here, we are already uh, you know, timing. We see if things can move quickly enough to be on on, on, on set or on time. Uh, are the actors' movements that we are doing, are they feasible within a certain time? And for a director, it's a, it's a very, very powerful tool to actually understand what he's getting. And in, in my understanding, I always say to them, listen, we, we can get to 50, 55, maybe 60% of the show uh, pre-programmed, before we come on site, which is already like three times what you would have normally, because now you come on site, you have a patch, uh, which is ready. Um, that, that tool, more than just lighting, is is the uh, that's what the you know the the ideas behind the, uh, uh, the tool set that we are putting together, and it's it's really been very successful for us. We have done now five or six stadium shows, showing actually uh, uh, these kind of things. And this thing here, that's the last little images. Uh, maybe you've seen some of the visualizations that we've put in here uh, in, the f in the form of movie. So this is actually the end result of that. And that makes me at 36 minutes, I have to keep it at this level and hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much.